Hey guys, uh, so my name's Shehab, and I'm super excited to be talking to you guys about Jira Service Desk. Now, this is the first time we're opening up our API to cloud and connect add-ons. So we've got a lot to dive into. I've split this talk up into two parts. Now, the first part of this talk focuses on why you should be building on top of Jira Service Desk. So what are the opportunities in this space? And the second part of this talk focuses on the how. So what are the APIs that are available and how can you get started with building on top of this product? But before we dive in, I just wanted to get a quick show of hands. How many of you guys are using Jira Service Desk today or help deploy it for a client? Nice, it's about almost the whole room. Well, you guys are among the 15,000 teams and counting around the globe using Jira Service Desk. Now, this is actually a pretty staggering statistic when you think about it, because Jira Service Desk launched just over two years ago. It's the fastest growing product in Atlassian. Now, for those of you that don't know, Jira Service Desk was born about from a real customer need. A few years ago, we were researching what customers were using Jira for outside of software development. And we found that a large chunk of them, 40%, were using Jira to run their IT service desk. There's nothing really wrong with that. Jira is a super flexible product. You've got custom field, flexible workflows, permission schemes, notifications. You can pretty much model any process with that. But as we dug deeper, we found that aside from just tracking their work, these service teams were facing two key challenges. First up, they needed a way to connect with their customers, many of whom were non-technical employees within the organization. And the second thing was that they often had to deal with a high volume of tickets. So they needed a way to effectively and efficiently keep track of these tickets and get through them on time. Now, these were the two fundamental problems that Jira Service Desk set out to solve. And we built many features and capabilities over the years to try and address them, like an intuitive customer portal to help engage end users to create and track their requests. We've integrated a knowledge base backed by rich articles from Confluence, so end users can help themselves and save time. On the other side, we've built shared queues to help service teams specialize and focus on the right tasks. SLAs to help prioritize and measure against time commitments. Reports to help visualize performance and discover insights and an automation framework to help reduce the repetitive tasks and scale up the team. And most of you guys know this, at Summit last year, we introduced Jira Service Desk as its own separate offering. So you can now buy it standalone. And we've seen this produce a massive boost in growth, especially in cloud. And we've got a huge team at Atlassian and we're going to keep adding core features and capabilities to this product. But IT is way more than just a service desk. And that's exactly why I'm here to talk to you guys. We'd love to get our ecosystem to help out. Now, before I dive into the specific opportunities, I want to let you in on a little secret. Why does Jira Service Desk win? What's our secret source? Well, to find this out, we ran a survey with our existing customers, and we've got responses from over 400 different teams. And we found that the number one aspect of Jira Service Desk that our customers benefit from is ease of use. Now, you probably already know this, that many IT vendors in the space are notorious for producing clunky tools with bloated interfaces that try to do every checkbox under the sun. But because of the consumerization of IT, end users are no longer happy with this. They're demanding awesome experiences as the standard. And that's why Jira Service Desk wins. So as you think about building your add-ons for the IT market, keep that in mind. So try to prioritize that end user experience. But it's a delicate balancing act, because the number two reason why our customers love our product is because it's flexible. We build tools that allow our customers to model their process, not the other way around. And while it's great to provide out-of-the-box solutions like ITIL templates and workflows, which is what we will continue doing, try to not be prescriptive in how your add-on can be used. And the last thing that I'd like to mention is the number one reason why our customers migrate off their existing tool 
and switch to Jira Service Desk. Does anyone want to take a guess at what that is? That's right, it's because of Jira. Jira is the leader in the software development space, and everyone is aspiring to bring their IT and software development teams closer together. So what are some specific opportunities for add-ons and integrations in the IT market? Well, you could build integrations with monitoring tools, so when a system goes down, you don't have to wait for a user to complain. An alert could be automatically generated inside Jira Service Desk. Now, you could detect that a few similar alerts have occurred. Node 1, out of memory. Node 2, out of memory. Node 3, you kind of get the picture. Probably something bigger is going on. Now, you could build an add-on that has enough smarts to know when to raise an incident from a pattern of these alerts. And you could correlate system-generated incidents to user-reported ones and link them back to problems and bugs that the dev team can fix. Change. Well, fundamentally, Jira Service Desk can be the system of record for your IT team. Now, you can already track changes and model approvals with Jira Service Desk workflows, but as add-on developers, you can take it to the next level and make that change happen by executing that change. Asset management. You've already seen how one of our vendors, Riata, has already built an add-on that generates an asset catalog, so you can link these change tickets back to servers and applications. And of course, you can automate away the most common service requests that we know and love. Can you reset my password? Or could you grant me access to a particular system? Now, there's plenty of opportunities here to really supercharge IT teams. But just like we said IT is more than just a service desk, well, Jira Service Desk is way more than just IT. Let me share an amazing statistic with you guys. In our latest customer research, we found that 50% of Jira Service Desk customers are using the tool for external customer support. Now, that's amazing because we didn't build Jira Service Desk ground up for external facing customer support teams. But there are aspects of Jira Service Desk, like the customer portal, the pricing model, the integration back with the dev team. These are things that check enough of the boxes for our customers to use the tool for IT and customer support. But that means there are many opportunities to build high-value add-ons in this space. Like multi-channel integration, we've already seen how AppFire is building JSD Call Center to provide a new channel to create issues through voice. And there are other channels worth investigating, like SMS or chat, even native applications to make it easy for the end user to go and get help. Now, you could also build social media integration, so that ranting tweet or that angry Facebook post can automatically create a customer case that your service team can deal with. Now, once a ticket's been created, you could provide CRM-like capabilities, which is what Avizia are doing with Atlas CRM, to easily reference company and contact information. Now, you can pump in relevant data from LinkedIn or Salesforce to better manage leads and renewals, and build out contract management and link that back with SLAs. You could even power the entire support section of your product website using Jira Service Desk. And of course, you can capture customer feedback and present that in a way that can represent actionable and meaningful input for your dev teams to work on. As you can see here, there's a variety of opportunities in this space. But there's also another emerging use case within Jira Service Desk I'd like you to consider, and that's business teams. Well, what do I mean by these business service teams? Well, these are things like facilities, HR, legal, finance, and so on. Now, you can help these teams by building use case-specific add-ons. So for HR, for example, you could build an add-on that knows how to parse resumes and post job listings online and have applicants modeled as tickets in a queue. Now, we've seen service desk spread like wildfire within organizations. Some organizations have over 100 different service desk projects. So we only expect this opportunity to grow with time. I've talked a lot about numbers, markets, and opportunities for building on top of Jira Service Desk. But now let's move on to the media part, the how. How do you actually build on top of this product? Well, the how really comes down to API. We've conceptually split up the API into three major parts. Getting data in and out of Jira Service Desk using the REST APIs, reacting to change by using webhooks to orchestrate actions in remote systems, and being one with our UI, so surfacing your own content from your add-on directly into the agent view and the customer portal interface. 
But before I dive in, it's worth noting that Jira's service desk is standing on the shoulders of the giant that is Jira. So all of the API plugin points and integrations that you're already familiar with in the Jira platform, well, you can already use those today to build add-ons for Jira Service Desk. So when you look at a ticket like this, ITSD5, I can't connect to the Wi-Fi. The issue key, the summary, the fields, the people, the description, attachments, even the issue actions, they're all already accessible using the comprehensive and well-documented Jira REST API. So you can create, retrieve, update, and delete Jira Service Desk tickets already using this API. Now, one additional thing that Service Desk adds onto an issue is service level agreements. So it's a sophisticated way of measuring times against goals. Here you can see on this ticket, we've got an initial response time with a business goal of two hours. We've already spent 10 minutes on this ticket without responding and have another hour and 50 minutes to go before the SLA breaches. On this same ticket, we've got a secondary SLA measuring our overall resolution time. We've got 24 business hours to hit that goal. Now, these SLAs and goals are super flexible, so admins can craft their own, like time to assign, time waiting for customer, time in level one support, and so on. Now, in order to get easy access to this SLA data, we've introduced a REST API that pulls out these detailed time metrics. Start time, breach time, goal, elapsed time, remaining time, all of these metrics are available using this API. And you can do some pretty neat things with this data. Like, you could build an add-on that generates a custom SLA report, one for each client. Or you could start to get fancy and even predict penalty rates for breaching SLAs. Now, these Jira and REST APIs are useful to get information out of the agent's view of the world. But one of the benefits of Jira Service Desk is that it can give customers a simplified yet restricted view into the ticket. Here's a view of the same ticket from the agent interface shown in the customer portal on the right. Now, you can see that some of the fields have been renamed. So instead of component, the customer is asked, what system does it affect? And instead of description, the customer is asked to provide additional information. Even the status has been renamed from waiting for customer to waiting for your response. And many of the other fields that carry internal information about the ticket, like the assignee, labels, issue type priority, all of these have been removed away from the customer's view. So just like you can get the ticket information using the Jira REST APIs from the agent's perspective, we've introduced the Jira Service Desk REST APIs so you can get the information about a ticket from the customer's perspective. So now you get the customer-friendly fields and statuses as well as that restricted view into the ticket. So by using the Service Desk REST APIs, you can be sure that none of the internal fields or internal comments will leak out. Now, the neat thing about Jira Service Desk is that we've got agent-based pricing. So that means only Service Desk team members are required to be licensed as paying agents. The end users or the customers of Jira Service Desk are completely free. So if you use the Jira Service Desk REST APIs, you can effectively create tickets for an unlimited number of end users. Now, this opens up the opportunities for some pretty cool add-ons. Like, you've already seen how AppFire have built their voice integration, so they get a list of request types using the REST API, and they read it aloud via the phone. Users effectively drive the customer portal interface through the phone call, and they end up transcribing a fully detailed ticket that the add-on can then create via the REST API on behalf of the customer. We've got another vendor, Whisper, that's looking to build out lightweight SMS integration. So users SMS a known number to get help, and then they're asked, they're provided a link to fill in some additional details. Then this information is then used by the add-on to create the complete ticket inside Jira Service Desk. Now, the cool thing here is the user doesn't even need to log in to raise a request. Now, using the REST API, you can even build your own support website. Now, this doesn't even look like Jira Service Desk, but that's the point. You control the complete rendering, so you have ultimate control over the layer and the brand, and this can be done using the power of the REST API. Now, you can also use the REST API to create tickets on behalf of machines. Now, there are many monitoring tools out there that you can integrate with. But the benefit of using the REST API instead of using basic things like email integration is that you can get structured information in these tickets. 
And you can use that detailed information in issue fields to power things like SLAs, automatic routing, or linking between tickets. So you effectively raise these alerts from being simple notifications to being structured and robust incidents that you can track inside your service desk. Now, there's a lot of opportunities with just opening up the REST APIs alone, but let's move on to the next class of API, and that's reacting to change within Jira Service Desk. Jira Service Desk ships with a pretty powerful automation framework. Let me see a show of hands if you've used this automation framework before. Sweet, it's about half the room, so I'll run through this a bit quickly. Admins can create automation rules, so when a certain trigger occurs, like an issue is created or a comment is added, if it meets certain criteria, then you can take certain actions. So you can alert a specific user or choose to transition the issue in an automated way. I'm going to run you through a few quick examples so you can get the idea. Here's an example of automatic triage. So when an issue is created, if it contains the word account, then automatically set the request type to fix an account problem. That way, all emails mentioning the word account will get routed to the right team, which is pretty neat. Now, here's another example. When an SLA is about to breach on a high-priority ticket, automatically alert the team lead. That way, she can try and step in before that breach actually occurs. Automation gives admins the building blocks they need to craft these rules to help their team scale up and work efficiently. But if you really look at automation, you'll notice that most of these rules are very inward focused. They focus on reacting to a change in tickets by applying some more manipulation to some more tickets. And what we really wanted to do is open up automation so you can affect things in the real world beyond just these tickets. So we've recently introduced the ability to fire webhooks via automation. So you can construct rules like this. When an issue is created, if it's a request, say, to update the user's details, you can fire off a webhook. Now, the webhook here has a URL that can be configured. You can provide optional headers and choose to include the issue body in the payload. But if you look at the bigger picture, what this means is if a user wants to change their name, for example, you can fire off a webhook to an internal service, and that internal service can verify the user's details and call out to LDAP and make that change happen. So once the user's name has been changed in LDAP and it gets the update notification, that internal service can then update the status of that ticket using the REST API. Now this is kind of cool because you can really start to build real-world self-service. Directory changes, permission changes, onboarding, provisioning, all of these manual tasks could be automated away. Now I know what some of you guys are thinking. This is really great for system integrators, but how do add-ons get in on this action? But well, one of the things we're working towards is the ability for cloud add-ons to package up these remote actions. So you can create your own Lego blocks and distribute them and sell them on the Atlassian marketplace. For example, in the near future, you'll be able to build a Connect add-on that knows how to send, say, outgoing SMS. As an add-on developer, you provide the name, icon, and webhook URLs as well as the configuration UI. So you control the contents of this UI, and it can be as elaborate as you need. So in this case, we've got two fields, who to send to and what to send. Now, this configuration state gets saved with the automation rule. So when the rule fires, the webhook contains the payload consisting of the issue, user, change log, as well as that configuration state. So your add-on will have all the information it needs to generate and send that outgoing SMS. But the neat thing here is that admins don't need to know any of that. They don't need to know what's going on under the covers. They simply now have the ability to craft rules like when an issue is created, if the issue is a SEV1 incident, then go and send an SMS to the incident response manager. And it's not really a far stretch for an add-on to build a full-blown paging system that can model rosters of who's on call and who to escalate to. Another opportunity is to build multi-channel, two-way integration using remote actions and the REST API. Now, when a new comment is added on a ticket, you could fire off a webhook that knows how to post that comment in an in-app chat or via an SMS. Now, by combining this with the REST API, you can send and receive messages, so you have that complete two-way communication. You can also use remote actions 
for orchestration. There are plenty of cloud platform providers and tools out there that you can orchestrate and link out to. So when a change request now gets approved, you can actually make that change happen and report the status of that change back on the issue using the REST APIs. And this automation doesn't have to stop at the platform level. You could connect automation to things like placing new orders for hardware, software, even office facilities. So the opportunities here and the possibilities are actually truly amazing. But just to recap, admins can already configure their webhooks today in Jira Service Desk using automation. And in the near future, we're going to open up the APIs so that you guys out there, ecosystem vendors, can package up and build your remote actions and distribute them on the marketplace. Now, on to the last and final class of API I'm here to talk about. And that's integrating with the Service Desk UI. Atlassian products are known for their pluggability and extensibility. And we really want to continue this tradition inside Jira Service Desk. The Service Desk product, as you know, has two distinct interfaces, one for agents and one for customers. And we've started adding plugin points to both. Let's start in the agent interface, where most of the work gets done. This part of the screen should look very familiar to you guys, because it's really Jira's view issue screen. And you can plug into this screen just like you would in Jira Software or Jira Core using web panels. In fact, that's how Jira Service Desk renders the SLA panel as well as the knowledge base panel. Issue panels are an awesome way to provide contextual information to help agents when they're working on tickets. Now, here are a few examples. From Atlas CRM, you can see that they've pulled in company and contact details on an issue. You can also provide information like the underlying alert from the monitoring tool that generated the incident. Or something completely different, like the ability to directly call back the user or the reporter of that ticket right from within the issue. Now, there's a lot of flexibility in what you can do with issue panels. But let's move one level higher in the API. Agents pick off these issues from a shared queue. This allows admins to split up their service desk into specialized areas a queue for incident responses, a queue for service requests, change requests, and so on. Inside Jira Service Desk, these queues are already pretty flexible. Admins can define the criteria for which issues to show up, control the order of these issues, and also the columns that get displayed. But what we're looking to do is open up the ability for add-ons to define their own custom queues and completely control the rendering. So you could do things like build a custom queue of live phone calls where an agent can jump in and answer a call or choose to join an existing one directly from within the queue. Now, here's a different example, showing a list of security events from a remote system. Now, this allows agents the ability to select which of these security incidents or security events deserve to be treated as incidents and which of them are safe to ignore. Now, you can build this using custom queues. Now, another core aspect of Jira Service Desk is reports. Here's a very basic fundamental report showing the overall ticket flow, so created versus resolved. Here's a more complicated one. It's a custom report that was created by an admin showing the breakdown of tickets created based on geographical office. Now, reports like this can actually be constructed already inside Jira Service Desk using pretty powerful JQL. So again, there's quite a lot of flexibility baked into the product. But instead of just limiting our users to time series and bar charts, we're opening up the reports UI. So add-on developers can craft their entirely new reports. So you could build visualizations like pie charts through the tag clouds showing common topics in recent tickets, or even entirely different ways to visualize activity on a global service desk. Now, there's a lot of room for creativity when you think about building custom reports. Let's move one level higher on the UI again, above queues and reports, is the project sidebar. You can plug into this primary level context as well for new high-level constructs. So you might want to have a quick way to view all the assets, applications, and services associated with a service desk project. Again, as an add-on developer, you have complete control over this interface. So you can visualize these items as you see fit. Now, there's plenty of opportunities to plug into the agent interface. But let's look at the other side of the coin, and that's the customer portal. The Help Center is the landing place for the customer portal. 
and many, many add-ons have wanted to get their content to appear on this prime real estate. So what we've done is we've opened up the ability to plug into certain areas of the portal, like the header, subheader, and footer. Now, you can build some pretty cool add-ons, like you could help new users on board. Hey, Alison, we've detected that you've just logged in for the first time, so we're going to recommend some articles to you, setting up Atlassian Sydney printers, or you know, how to work from home. You could also craft service desk specific panels, so IT could advertise their walk-up hours. Today is walk-up Wednesday. Come drop by the team on level six between two and five for any IT help. Add-ons can also inject into the request forms themselves, so you could provide information before someone creates a ticket. For example, the IT team may already know that there's a Wi-Fi problem, and they don't need the hundredth report of that exact same issue. Now, another area of integration that's often needed by add-ons is the ability to provide custom fields. Now, we've seen vendors like Riata creatively work around our API to get these fields to appear on the customer portal, like their asset tracking field. Now, unfortunately, this isn't something that we have as API today, but we're working with the Jira team to make this available in the near future. Now, once a ticket gets created, aside from the usual header and footer integration points, we're also adding integration points into request actions and request panels. So you can plug into those. Now, this allows you to do some pretty cool things, like you could give the reporter the ability to quickly call back support. Or you could give them a view into their recently related tickets. Or you could support even more complicated interactions, like screen sharing directly from within the request view. Now, there are many other plugin points you can integrate to, and we plan on adding more as time goes on. Just to wrap up, we've covered quite a lot in this talk. This is the first time we're unleashing our Atlassian Connect-capable APIs. So there's a real opportunity here, guys, to be first to market in building add-ons for IT, customer support, and business service teams. Hopefully, we've inspired you with a few examples. But what we'd really love to do is hear from you guys out there about your cool, crazy ideas for building on top of Jira Service Desk. We've also brought three of our engineers from Sydney, Greg, our API team lead, Brad, our Service Desk architect, and Frotha, our front-end architect. And we'll be here throughout Atlas Camp because we'd love to chat more about the possibilities for building on top of this product. We've got loads of docs, examples, and API available, and we're sponsoring the best Jira Service Desk add-on at CodeGuys this year. So head on over to developer.atlassian.com slash Jira Service Desk, or slash Service Desk, sorry, and get started. Thank you.